holla at your boy one time. This week on Thug Notes, we getting twisted with The Catcher in the Rye by J.D. Salinger. This book tells the story of Holden Caulfield, a 16-year-old white boy who started talking about the events that got his ass slung up in a mental hospital. You see, last Christmas, Holden got kicked out of his prissy private school for flunking all his classes. Except English, holla! So then he drops in on his old teacher, Spencer, who tells him that he gotta get his shit together. Later, Holden rolls up to his crib where he throws down with his roomy Stradlater, who be macking some girl Holden used to holla at. After getting his ass whooped, Holden pieces out to New York City where he gonna lay low at the Edmont Hotel. Now my boy comes clean to the reader and admits he ain't never busted his chair, even though he say he always been swimming in shrimp. So he decided to get himself a pro named Sonny and get his freak on. When Sonny rolls up to his crib, Holden chokes like a bitch and say he just wanna talk. Then Sonny tried to shake my boy down for more cash, but Holden ain't backing down and kicks her ass out. Next thing you know, Sonny's pimp, Maurice, busts in Bitch slaps Holden and jacks that paper, son. So Holden eventually decides he gonna see his baby sister Phoebe, who asks him what he wanna be about. Holden says he sees himself in a big field of rye, full of kids, where he be standing at the cliff catching any little homies who bout to fall off. Now when his folks come home, Holden slips out to kick it with his old teacher, Mr. Antolini. But Holden got a bell when he thinks that creepy cat be feeling on him while he sleep. Mm. At this point, Holden bout to straight lose his shit. So he decided to get the hell out of Dodge. His sister Phoebe want to join up, but he shuts her ass down. Phoebe gets all lamped and tells him to shut his trap. So Holden apologizes to Phoebe and takes her to the zoo where he enjoys watching her kick it on the carousel. At this point, Holden say all he want to say. He could talk about how he got sick and locked up, but he just ain't feeling. A true player might say that Catcher illustrates how Holden trying to find stability and acceptance in a broken society full of people that always be faking. But when that fool come up empty handed, he gotta get real and buck the system. Now break yourself of this here symbol, blood. By turning around his hunting hat, Holden be telling us that his values be the reverse of the rest of society's. And if you roll rolling like a G, you probably notice that be the same way baseball catchers wear their hat, foreshadowing his role as the catcher in the rock. And unless you peep this quote that be explaining the title, you be acting like a straight phony. I keep picturing all these little kids playing some game in this big field of rye, and I have to catch everybody if they start to go over the cliff. On the literal hold and be saving kids from falling off a cliff, but figuratively, he's saving them from all the bent ass shit of adulthood. Even though there ain't nothing Holden can do to stop the pure world of children from changing to the fake ass world of adults, he gonna buck it for himself and other little homies for as long as he can. So when Holden preaching about the glass cases up in the museum, what he really saying is that he don't wanna join the ranks of them fake ass adults. He wanna freeze time just like them plastic players behind the glass. That's why the only one he can keep it real with is his baby sister Phoebe. But that ain't cutting it. Holden be tripping cause he got a legit desire to search for beauty and human contact, but just ain't finding it in a world of such ugliness. This is what makes Holden one of the loneliest players in all of literature. He keeps it so real, while everybody else front. But as much as Holden be spitting that righteous talk, he sure as hell ain't no prince. Like he say, I'm the most terrific liar you ever saw in your life. And although he wants you to think he hard, Homeboy got a gentle soul. That's why he always asking what them ducks in the Central Park Lake gonna do once the water freezes over. So in the end, this gangster pays the price for being too soft in a world twisted by the sea by spending his days in a psych ward. Damn. Yo, thanks for checking in. I'll catch you next week, my well-read ballers.